Now, they've got to have a manager behind them that's pushing, 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 pushing hard for them. Have to have a manager doing that for you. You, get, you got to. You can't do this all on your own. Peter. Wah, 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 wah. Hey everybody, welcome back. <clears throat> welcome back to the show. Let's talk some Formula One, baby. Huh? Let's talk some Formula One. Yeah, there's some. Pl there's plenty of news, guys. We're gonna go through uh, FormulaOne.com there and just go through some of the uh, the updated news. And uh, we're now in between Zandvoort, the Dutch Grand Prix, and Manza, the Italian Grand Prix, with the Defosi, the lovely, the sexy Tifosi. Guys, if you've never seen the Italian Grand Prix and you're new to Formula One, you've gotta watch the Italian Grand Prix. Especially if they have a good result. I mean, if Ferrari, which I think it's going to take a miracle for them at this stage, if they could get a, a podium in Italy, wait till you see the Italian fucking crowd, man. They, they will absolutely hijack, take over the Formula One circuit. It's it's incredible. Their passion for the and the love of motor racing the Italian crowd have it's very very hard to to top it very hard to top i mean they i think they're probably the best in the world they really are and and it's great to see it really is it's um does cause the, the drivers to have some pressure though you know uh like the, they they've got to fucking perform you know things things get things the shit hits the fan if if they don't start winning or at least a podium and i'll give them that they're always happy enough with a podium Believe it or not. Um, but hopefully they can have a good weekend. I'd love to see, especially Leclerc. I mean, my God, he had a nightmare at uh, at Zandvoort, didn't he? Jesus. And I still can't figure out exactly what happened with him. Did he just understeer off the track? I just think he just carried too much speed going in. It wasn't that he just understeered off. So, guys, if, if you're not sure what understeer is, understeer is when you turn in to a corner and the car just feels like it goes straight on, or even better yet, it does go straight on. It just doesn't grip, it doesn't stick you, plant you on the road to get you around the bend. So uh, that would be understeer. So it didn't look like he had understeer, it just, I think he just carried too much fucking speed. And to be, f oh look, mistakes can happen, right? It was, it was raining, then it was starting to dry up, so even when the, the track does dry up, and this is a good good note for you guys too, right? When next time you're watching a, a wet race or a wet qualifying, and then it actually, at the end of a qualifying, let's say, in, like in, in Zandvoort, at the end of the qualifying, there was a dry line, so it was, uh, it can be very, very slippy when that happens, uh, because there's no grip laid down. Now, when it's dry, there's a lot of grip that gets laid down on the track and then the cars go quicker technically now what happens then in the wet when it starts to rain the rain actually washes away the tire grip therefore you've got no grip left on the track so it's like a brand new fresh track all over again now how much slower depends on the track itself you could be looking at a second up to two seconds maybe again it's a, that's just a, a rough guesstimate there for you now but I mean it can get that slow so when you do watch qualifying especially when it's dry all weekend tr rubber that gets laid down on the track it's very very important and especially with the the cars now because as uh, as many of you know the cars there are there's three types of, of uh, tires now there's got you've got the hard the medium and the soft so some cars will actually be better on the softer tires versus the hard tires they might even struggle on hard tires are some cars will will go better on the hard tires versus the soft tires so I'll give you an example like if a car has got let's say some cars when they come out of a wind tunnel are just any actually cars in general or even carts some chassis, that's the, 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 the body of a car, some chassis will just naturally have a lot of grip, let's say. Some chassis will, have, will naturally have fucking zero grip. So if you do have a car that's got a lot of grip naturally, 
they'll probably tr be trying to lose grip. In other words, they're trying to get rid of it, less wing, uh, less camber, less tracking, a toe in, toe out. I mean, all sorts of different variations mechanically, of course. Um, they could even they could even fiddle around with the the ride height, the rake of the car. Now, the rake of the car is when when the car is off. There's obviously a gap, if you can see. Um, there's a very small gap between the bottom of the car to the ground. So that would be the right height, as in how far is it off the track. The rake would be how much it's dipping to the front, let's say. So, I mean, normal terms, if you're looking for more grip, you'll be dipping the front to the you'll be dipping the front of the car to the front, okay? So in other words, the back would be jacked up a little bit more and the car would be facing down. Now, technically, that would give you more grip because there's more, as, as in, if you can almost see it, there's more weight on the front of the car now than the back. Now, if there's more weight, there's more focus, you could say, concentration on all that area and the, the footprint of the car, you could say, maybe. So therefore, you should have a lot of grip. So, in other words, the cars would be raked then. In other words, they'd have the car leaning back to the, putting more weight to the back of the car. So, I mean, there's all sorts of different scenarios that can happen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like that's, that, that would be a car now that has got naturally too much grip. Then you can go the other way, of course. Right, so, oh, sorry, back to my point. Beg your pardon. <laughs> I'm jumping around. So the point is that, is that some cars will handle better on harder tires than soft tires, or the other way around. But the point is that, is that the car, uh, the drivers and the teams, they've got to get the balance between where, where do they slot in. And that's when uh, all these grip levels, they matter, they can differ for everybody. Um, I think it was a really, really good policy what they had uh, when they had that, um, oh lord, I think was it in Belgium or Hungary, where they had a uh, the qualifying and it was good because it actually mixed everything up and I think they should go back to that qualifying format. It was fucking brilliant because you had Valtteri Bottas up in second position, which he was nowhere before that. But what I liked about it was you had the three qualifyings, one, two and three, but in qualifying one they start off on hard tires, qualifying two was medium, qualifying three was soft tires. I think that's a really good format because you're up against everybody on this, well, not the same equipment, but at least it's the same tires. So it does even it out. It balances things out a bit. And Valtteri Bottas, he was up in second. He's been fucking nowhere since. So it just goes to show you that the balance of the cars can so just rapidly change around when you're dealing with with uh, with different tires. So uh, anyway, let's move on. It's a bit of bit of news, and anyway, a bit of hopefully a bit of good, useful information for you guys. Um, how the car set up and things like that. Uh, so yeah, Zandvoort was really really good. Monza this weekend. It's going to be awesome. Uh, it's always great to watch. Even uh, Monza is a very very engine powered track. You could say. Uh, I think. Uh, in fact. I, d I did my preview um, in, in one of my previous episodes, my Monza F1 preview. So uh, check that out too, guys. Um, I go through who's who's looking good. I mean, Verstappen is obviously looking really good. Really good. Um, you got McLaren up there now. I mean, they were, I think, weren't they second and third? I have to double check it now. But they were right up there at Zandvoort. They've come on fucking leaps and bounds, man. Uh, I think... They're going to be up there again uh, when it gets to uh, when it gets to Monza. I think they've got a good engine in, under their bonnet, so to speak. Mercedes, the, I mean it's Mercedes, right? Unbelievable engine. Can they do anything? In fact, guys, I'm just going to share my screen with you now. So if you're listening on Spotify and Apple, I'll obviously I'm going to keep talking, so you're not going to miss anything. Um, but if you're watching on YouTube, you'll obviously be able to to see my screen here. Um, I think it's going to be a good one this weekend. Mercedes, can they bring the fight to them? If Red Bull, if they're struggling anywhere, a tiny little weakness, it's possibly in their engine. Now, at the start of the year, at the start of the year, they were really, really good, but 
the other teams. And like I've been saying throughout the year, guys, is that the other teams are upgrading too. So when they get upgrades, they're going to get faster. And you've got to start, you know, sprinting ahead or getting as fast as you can to get your next upgrade on that car. Because, well, you just, you got to stay up to date. I mean, it's really simple. I mean, McLaren have just pulled off one of the most unbelievable <laughs> updates the world's ever fucking seen. I mean, that rarely happens where you've got, uh, like, just an unbelievable jump from, like, from nowhere, you know? Um... Where did they get this upgrade? It was incredible. It truly was. That rarely happens. Rarely fucking happens. You can gain a couple of tents here. You can gain a couple of tents there. But not what they've done. I mean, they came from what? Midfield to the back. Boom. One race up at Silverstone. High speed track. Bang. They're there. And they were pretty much there at Zan uh, Hungary too. Zandvoort is a small, twisty, tw tw uh, tight track. So it does even show they have a great balance in their car. So the, I think they're going to do well at all tracks coming up. Because Zandvoort, Hungary versus Spa and Silverstone. Two, two medium to slow uh, speed tracks versus two high speed tracks. They both performed at both. Both types. So... It was just, it was bloody good. It was absolutely excellent. So I think they're going to be up there. Um, I want to talk about Albon, actually. And this new guy, Vowles, Vowles. I'm not sure how exactly how to pronounce his name. I think it's Vowles. But Jesus, man. I mean, th this guy, he's on the ball, this fella. I mean, Albon finishes in fourth at the weekend up at Zandvoort. Excuse me. Um, I mean, let's just have a look at him. Even George Russell is hailed James Vowell as the best man for the job at, the, at Williams. It was. It was It was incredible. Um, Albon has come from nowhere. I mean, if anybody's been paying attention, Williams have been at the back. I mean, if they were lucky, they were on the second last row instead of the fucking last row on the grid. I mean, they were, they've been nowhere. So it's great to see. And it just goes to show you how one man can come in and finish off and get the fucking job done. It's it, it, truly remarkable what, what that man has done. Truly fucking remarkable. Um, he deserves a lot of praise. Can't, now, no, okay, let's say not a lot of praise because he ain't winning yet. But I mean, what he's done has been incredible. Can he finish the job now? Can he get it back to its winning ways, Williams? Hopefully he can, because I think this guys he's the man for the job. There's no doubt about it. This, this isn't some fluke that this guy Puzz pulled off. Not at all. Not at all. And Albon's shown some... He's shown some pace at the other tracks, too. You know, so this is, this is looking good for them. Um, let's have a look. I mean, you've got a lot of what Vowles has been, Vowles has been saying. Uh, they were very quick in the wet, which was awesome to see. You know, I mean, that, that does show a lot of a, a test of, of how good a car is coming along. Um, can they get the job done? I think they could get the job done by next year. I think they can. If they're going to break through. They could be one of the top contending teams for next year. So, let's keep an eye on that. Verstappen, hey, well, what can you say? I was talking about this in the other podcast in the preview. What can you say? Nine wins in a row. He's equal Sebastian Vettel's record. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Can he break the 10? That's going to be interesting to see. That's going to be very interesting to see. Uh, I think he will. I think he's going to win at the weekend. I'm going to say it. And that's my prediction. Uh, I think they do have a good engine in the car. But most of all, they can, they've such great grip. I mean, that car is a self-generating grip car. They've so much grip that they can lose downforce and set the car up for engine speed. So even though they mightn't have the strongest of engines, 
they can gain by losing a bit of grip in their mechanical and aero grip so then they can gain back up again on the engine straight or the, sorry on the speed on the the straights so i think it's going to be extremely interesting what's going to happen there for verstappen uh it's going to be i think it's going to be uh definitely one to watch no doubt about it uh let's see fred vassar well jesus let's have a look what he's saying uh he's got um sorry guys i'm just double checking the the split screen here um <laughs> let's see pursuing pinnacle with ferrari uh who is one of the toughest jobs in formula one well that is for sure and he's going to be under pressure here this weekend at uh, at Italy, guys. He's going to be under a lot of fucking pressure to deliver a home result. I don't think it's going to happen, but hopefully he can. Uh, is he the right man for the job? Hard to know. Very hard to know. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't have a lot of confidence, really, on what in what he's going to do with t delivering the job to the table. I really don't. I really don't. Um, okay, let's have a look at some of the tech talk here. Um, and I presume, guys, if you've seen uh, Magnussen and Hulkenberg, they've re-signed again with, uh, with Haas for next year. Now, look, like I was saying, I mean, look, it's great. It's They've got a secure year, but... <sighs> do you want to be messing around at, at the back of the grid, mid-grid if you're lucky? I mean, it's got to be incredibly frustrating for them. Are they hanging in there just to see that another team will take them on board? I mean, right here, right now, they've got to have a manager behind them that's pushing, 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 pushing hard for them. Have to have a manager doing that for you. You get, you got to. You can't do this all on your own. Now, Hulkenberg didn't have a manager for a couple of years. Not a good idea. But uh, look, he still did a bit of a job. He was kind of the replacement guy, and then he's, he's got into the team. And he's done a good job, the both of them have. Hulkenberg and Magnussen, to what they have, to how bad the car is, they've done a good fucking job. And there's not much more they can do. The team have really got to dig deep. The drivers have got to try and put pressure on the team if they can. Maybe even work together to get the fucking job done. Get Haas, the boss, get him to invest more fucking money even though the budget cap. Steal some fucking engineers, steal some mechanics team, steam fucking team principals from other teams. I mean, you can see the way Vowles with Williams, he's just brought this, this team back from the fucking dead. One man, it's come down to. One fucking man. And sometimes that's all it takes. I mean, Frank Williams was the, obviously the original founder of Williams. He brought the team from nowhere, started the team. He was winning. Not straight away, but he was always up there. Ron Dennis did the same with McLaren. And then Ron, Ron leaves. Guess what? They all go to shit. So, you got to give some credit to Zach Brown, team principal at McLaren. Got to give him some credit here. He's done an unimaginable U-turn here with the update that he had at Silverstone. From nowhere to fucking right up at the top. So, it was good. Uh, okay, let's have a look what they're saying here, guys. Uh, you know what? I don't trust that data, I gotta admit. Uh, yeah. You know what, guys? Actually, we're gonna, we're gonna leave it here now today. A uh, little bit of a short podcast, but in closing... Monza this weekend should be good. Should be good. Um, hopefully, we'll see uh, the McLarens up there again. I think uh, you'll definitely have the McLarens, the Red Bulls. Check out my other episode, like I was saying, guys, about the uh, my preview, full preview. We go through an onboard lap as well of the track, showing you the most important corners to really hone in on and key features in there, keep the momentum up. Monza's very, uh, very focused on exit speed because you've got such long straights that you've got to keep the momentum up, keep the speed up. Even if you lose one mile an hour coming out of the corners, that's going to fuck you all the way down that lo those long straights. So it's very, very important that they keep the momentum up, keep the consistency, keep the pace, and most of all, consistency. They have to be consistent. 
can who can pull it off? We'll see. So thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later. See ya. Peter. Wah, 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 wah.